always helps to hit the record button. <laughs> We're recording now, so. Oh, yeah, cool. Okay, three, two, one, intro. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Defluence Podcast. I'm your host, Uncle Bonehead, and with me as always is the very distinguished, I said distinguished this time. Uh, Alan <laughs> Taylor. Yes, indeed. Very distinguished. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, now, those of you that listened to us for a while, you remember we, was talk, we were reporting on the XRP suit or yeah case sec's case against xrp um they dropped the judgment you want to tell us about this yeah so uh it happened thursday uh, last thursday on the 13th um judge torres released her judgment on the case and Essentially, what it boils down to is, in most cases, XRP is not a security. In fact, her words were, um, "On the, it is not a security on the face of it." And so, <laughs> and it's and it's intrinsic, um, you know, use case uh, for what it was built for. It is not a security. Uh, however. There is one instance where it is. And so uh, she ruled essentially that XRP is a security uh, when it's sold directly to institutional investors, which it was um, when Ripple launched. They sold XRP as kind of like a, a fundraise, you know, when, when businesses do like an IPO and yeah. they sell stock uh, to raise money for capital, you know, for operations and such. Um, that's essentially what they did. They sold XRP, um, took in some investors, and that helped them get their launch. Uh, so that that's a security. Everything else is not. And so if you buy XRP on exchanges, it is not a security. If you trade XRP for another cryptocurrency, it is not a security. If you receive an airdrop of security of XRP. It is not a security. If you earn a bounty for, you know, doing work for Ripple, for instance, it is not a security. Um, the only time it's a security is when it's sold directly to institutional investors. So it's pretty much not a security for everybody except for people that want to use it to make money. Right. Uh, when, <laughs> when, Is, well, did I say that right? Well, close. When, um, when an institution buys XRP for the sole purpose of, um, a profit down the road, when they sell it, that is a security. So, for instance, uh, you know, you said if you buy it to make money. So, if you buy XRP on Coinbase, but you don't expect to use it for anything, you're just going to buy it and hold it and see if the price goes up. And two years later, after the price has gone up, you sell it. You made money. Um, that's not a security. Okay, so let me see if I can get this in my head. Let's say you accept XRP as a payment option for selling your old book or your old laptop. And they, yeah. they and then you, you, you got that XRP and then later on down the line, you're like, well, Oh look, you know, XRP is up. I can sell this and, make a little more money, make some money off of it, or I can trade it. Is that a security then? Yeah. Um, I, I do want to, I do want to clarify one thing. They have not determined whether secondary sales are securities or not. And so 
in that scenario, what you're talking about is a secondary sale. So that's, you know, that's after the uh, initial purchase, you buy it, uh, or it's given to you, uh, or you sell something like you say in exchange for XRP. Then later on, you sell it on the secondary market. We don't know if that's a security or not. Uh, there was no ruling on that particular Cause, question. Because that's what, that's to me, that's going to be the gotcha. <laughs> because I could see yeah. the SEC doing that, saying, oh, yeah. you made some money, you know, off of that. It's not a security until you make a profit. Yeah, um, I mean, there's certainly going to be tax implications for doing that. Okay, exactly. so the IRS yeah. has, you know, their rules. Uh, whether it's a security or not, that's going to be another question. Um, uh, now, I, I say that, but if you buy from an exchange and then you sell XRP back to the exchange later and you you make money on that, that clearly is not a security. Those are um, digital asset exchange um, <laughs> transactions. But if I sell um, XRP to you, you know, directly, for instance, and I make a profit on that, that's the question whether or not that is a security. So we don't know. <laughs> wow. So it's still a gray area, but it's a, yeah. it's a lighter shade of gray. <laughs> Yeah, and, and so the ruling basically gives us more clarity regarding um, what the rules are going forward. You know, up until now, there really has not been any regulatory clarity. The SEC has simply been declaring everything a security. Right. And so if you're if you're crypto, your security essentially is what they say, unless it's Bitcoin. Um, <laughs> Which that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, well, it does kind of make sense because Bitcoin has no, there's no company, there's no right. well, central I, authority. But I, um, I, okay, I see what you mean. But I was, I'm yeah. saying, you know, they're just doing a blanket, you know, thing, yeah. and then, oh, except yeah. for this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What well, they essentially, essentially, if it involves staking, um, which has been, which has become quite common now in the crypto space um then they're targeting those cryptocurrencies as securities and one one thing that we don't see with the xrp because this wasn't an issue for xrp is there's there's no there's no ruling about that so going forward there's still going to be that question about whether or not staking is a security nobody knows but once the Coinbase and Binance um, cases go through, that should clarify that because those are more about staking products, whereas XRP was really more about XRP and whether or not it is intrinsically a security. And we found out that it is not. And therefore, simply, simply having a business model based on a cryptocurrency does not make it a security and simply listing your cryptocurrency on an exchange does not make it a security um hmm. so there's another test that they have to run to see whether or not um anything is a security they call it the howey test and it's been around since um i think around the 50s um oh, so it's not named after howie mandel then no <laughs> no <laughs> okay uh it's named after a company that was called and named howie and a specific um um setup uh that involved selling um you know like land and farm products and that kind of thing um the specifics of the case um or the investment i don't i don't recall but they, they laid out four um, different criteria um, for what constitutes a security. And so one of them is, um, they say you, it's an investment product, it's a contract that involves an investment um, with the expectation of making um, a profit. 
And that profit is based on the performance of someone else. Uh, and that basically defines what the SEC calls a security. Uh, and so we've been operating under those rules for a very long time. And so the question was, does XRP fall into that category? And the judge ruled that only in the case of institutional investors. Interesting. Yeah, so I, I find that I find that to be very encouraging myself uh, for a number of reasons, and I think it has some very stark implications for the rest of the cryptocurrency field. Um, everything happening um, in crypto. And, you know, we can talk about, you know, some of those things. Yeah, you tweeted a, how many, seven-part tweet talking about this. What? Yeah, uh, this is my Twitter thread earlier this morning um, where I talk about uh, five different implications of this ruling and we can go over those so the yeah. first one the first implication is with regard to other cryptocurrencies everything that is not xrp sold on exchanges um if if your cryptocurrency is sold on an exchange that does not necessarily make it a security that could still be a security because they're going to run the Howey test on it. But if it's sold on an exchange, it doesn't necessarily make it a security. Okay. Yeah, so if you look at all these, the SEC has declared certain things, certain cryptocurrencies a, a security um, because they're being sold on Coinbase. Okay, Coinbase lists all these securities, and the SEC comes along and says, oh, you're, or they, they list all these cryptocurrencies. And the SEC comes along and says, oh, these are securities. Well, they're not necessarily securities just because they're listed on the exchange. Um, they may be securities for other reasons, but they are not securities simply because they're listed on the exchange. So they're... They're setting some kind of ground rules. Yes. Yes. To keep the... Now, this, this case can still be appealed, and the SE probably will appeal it, uh, which means XRP will, or Ripple will still have to continue defending XRP for some time because uh, of the appeals process. But personally, I don't think that the higher court will overturn the ruling. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. But they, um, I do expect the SEC to appeal. Cool. Yeah. Uh, number two. So number two, the, the second implication for the ruling is uh, it could have tremendous implications for the SEC's case against Coinbase and Binance especially Coinbase, um, because the SEC names specific cryptocurrencies um, uh, listed on these two exchanges uh, and refers to them as securities, the Howey test is going to have to be made against each one of those individually. Simply because they're listed on those exchanges doesn't that doesn't make them securities. And so uh, the SEC, I think, has an uphill climb um, to prove that all of these um, cryptocurrencies that they're targeting on these exchanges are indeed securities. Um, so they're going to go after going, each, each individual one then. Yeah. Not, you know, interesting, it's not every cryptocurrency listed on the exchanges, but they, they have identified specific ones, and a lot of them have staking features. And so with, with the Coinbase and Binance cases, um, a lot of it hinges on 
whether or not staking is considered a security. Hmm. And if the XR if the XRP case holds, then if if say they go through the appeal process, the second circuit um, doesn't overturn the ruling. Let's say they appeal again and they go to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court upholds the decision as well. Then that would solidify that as as a law, um, unless the legislature steps in and 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 creates a new law. Uh, but I think what that would do is strengthen Coinbase's and Binance's case against the SEC regarding those cryptocurrencies that are in question because staking is not an institutional uh, uh, product necessarily. Institutions can stake cryptocurrency, but it isn't, it's not like um, these companies are selling um, their cryptocurrency to institutional investors in order to raise money for their operations. That's not what staking is about. Right. Um, so, so I, I think I think the XRP case could bolster Coinbase's and Binance's arguments. Cool. Now, number three, you're talking about the XRP's price going up. Yeah. So. XRP's price has already doubled just a, just in a matter of a few hours after the um, the listing it went up it shot way up uh, okay. and I think that's good news for investors for people holding XRP it's also good for people that are using it um, but you know the long term implications on its price I think are are just as good or better um, so what's going to happen? Uh, say we hit a bull run. If uh, you know, typically uh, when we have a crypto bull run, uh, Bitcoin leads, and then everything else follows. And so Bitcoin goes up, and all these other coins go up in value as well. I think that's going to help XRP. So currently, it's hovering around the 75 cent mark. Um, it has potential to go beyond its all-time high, which is up over three dollars. And so, uh, if we, uh, during our next bull run, I think we could see XRP soar. Wow, that, that's kind of cool. Now you you mentioned that it's uh, on number five. He's talking about the international settlement settlements and cross-border transactions. What? Yeah, so, you know, XRP's chief use case is, you know, cross-border uh, transactions, international settlements, money transfers. That's what it was created to do. And their primary target are banks. Um, they built the product for banks. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the U.S. banks pulled out when um, the SEC food uh, Ripple. And so Ripple, most of Ripple's customers are overseas banks. Mm -hmm. I think I think we're going to start seeing more U.S. banks adopting XRP now and using it for their settlements and, and tr money transfers and, and cross-border transactions. Nice. Um, it, yeah, and so XRP, Ripple's product, is a good alternative to SWIFT. It's much faster than Swift, it's more efficient than Swift, uh, and, and so it's a good product for banks that are using Swift, and I do think that we'll start seeing more U.S. banks uh, using more, using XRP more, uh, and and that will cut into Swift's business and make uh, Ripple a competitive product. So they're back into the in crowd. Yeah, and that's going to be huge because, you know, but the U.S. has the strongest, most stable banking uh, ecosystem. And so if U.S. banks are getting behind the product, 
Um, I think that would drive more value for Ripple and drive up the price of XRP even more. Cool. Now, number five, you're talking about seeing more targeted legislation. Yeah. So which... it's implication number five. So I think I think we're going to see more legislation. Oh, they're, they're, all, they're already working on it. And, you know, uh, crypto has been in the regulatory and legislative, um, uh, you know, site now for a couple of years. And it seems to be growing. But I think... What everybody realizes now is that there is not enough clarity yep. on the cryptocurrency space and what the clear rules of the world, the 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 road are. So, uh, and since there is lack of clarity, it behooves both major political parties, Democrats and Republicans, who focus on meaningful legislation that will define precisely when. Crypto is a security when it's a commodity, uh, when it's you know money, when it's whatever. Okay, and define what the rules are, uh, and that will help the entire ecosystem. I do, I do agree with that. There's no doubt. You can't really build anything unless you got a foundation. Exactly, yeah. and without clear rules, it stifles innovation. <laughs> And it creates confusion in the marketplace. Nobody knows um, how to build a product because they're not sure if they're going to run afoul of existing laws. Since no, all of this is new. Nobody is, you know, nobody is a uh, has used the law um, to define the rules for crypto up until. Now, just in the last couple of years, the SEC has been trying to do that. And people in crypto are going, well, hold on a minute. These laws are old laws, and they don't really apply to this technology. No, um, they don't. So we really need new rules, and, and I think we're going to get them. It's about time. <laughs> yeah, uh, it might take a while, but I, I do think they're on the I, – I do – I think in the next couple of – um, um, election cycles, you're going to start seeing this become more and more of a debate topic between the parties. Um, and you know, what kind it of should legislation be. should we have? What kind of regulation should we have? Who should regulate? Uh, what? Who should have the authority um, to regulate crypto and the different? Uh, classes of crypto. I think all of that's going to get hashed out. It's going to take a while, but I think that's going to become more of an issue in the next few election cycles. Yeah, it's 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 like the little. It it literally is the biggest elephant in the room. It's it's the one thing that nobody wants to talk about. If we yeah, yeah they haven't wanted to until now, but I think I think they're going to be forced. Too, because you know we we got the SEC targeting big companies now. Okay, Ripple is is not a small company. It's one of the largest in the space, right? Right. Um, you know they're going after Coinbase and Binance, the two largest crypto exchanges. Um, and so it's clear, I think, that Gary Gensler has a vendetta against cryptocurrencies. Uh, and do we really, as a society, want one guy, one person, <laughs> one individual <laughs> determining what is right for everyone else? And I don't mm, think nope. that mo I don't think most of us will say yes to that question. Uh, even the Democrats uh, are going to say, yeah, I don't think I'm comfortable with that. So uh, I think there's going to be uh, a change going forward. And. Uh, people are going to start targeting meaningful legislation. I, I wouldn't be surprised if some of it was bipartisan. That'll be nice. Which, you know, yeah, scary, but nice. <laughs> <'Cause> they, <laughs> anything, right. they, anything they get together on is usually not. <laughs> yeah, it's usually not good. Um, right. In this case, I think it will be. Um, as long as they don't, as long as they don't go overboard and get, you know, 
too nutty with the laws and, and the rule. If, if they make sense and, you know, they, they drive innovation, um, they, they help build the sector uh, and, and, and legitimize it um, without stifling innovation uh, by helping entrepreneurs get creative with their product, then I think it'll be a good thing. Yeah. I, I, I do hope so. I do hope so. It is kind of cool that they've got the at least a partial win. That surprised me. You yeah. mentioned you uh, mentioned that earlier, and I about fell out of the chair. I was like, "No way!" <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not really that surprised. Um, I, I've said it before. I think I said it here on our podcast. I know I've put it in writing that I, I expected a partial ruling um, in favor of Ripple, um, and 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 I just saw all along that you know if they're selling XRP to institutional investors, which they did, we already know that uh, the SEC has gone after ICOs, initial coin offerings, and, you know, that is pretty clearly a security product. And that's essentially what XRP was. They didn't call it an ICO, but they were, they were uh, raising funds. You know, they were selling um, XRP to institutional investors so that they could um, acquire capital. I mean, that was the whole point. Um, so that makes sense that it would be a security. Everything else about XRP um, is definitely not a security. It's been my opinion all along. A lot of other people have agreed. And now we have this um, federal judge saying the same thing. So um, I, I, think, uh, I think the rules are getting clearer. Cool. It'll be nice. It will definitely be nice. Roger that. I don't know what else I could say about it. Um, I'm excited to be on the back end of this. I'm glad that it happened when it happened. We're looking at 2024. The next Bitcoin halving is just around the corner. And traditionally, Bitcoin halving are catalysts for bull runs. Um, and so I think we're on the verge of another bull run. So this is really good news it gives optimism um in the market and so i think we're going into the last half of this year with our heads up and reasons to be confident nice it's definitely nice bitcoin having is that is that going to be the day that ever ever all the bitcoin users Bitcoin maxis, yeah, Bitcoin maxis, get together and eat like turkey and pumpkin pie and. <laughs> um, yeah, you know that would be a pretty cool thing, actually. Uh, yeah, no, I don't know if you're familiar with how Bitcoin works, but yeah, you know, I was just being yeah, so trying to be funny. <laughs> yeah, it's like Thanksgiving Day, but it's like the Pilgrims and the Indians getting together. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah. It, uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what 2024 brings. As we get closer to the end of the year, I think we'll start seeing values go up all around. That'll be nice, especially for Hive. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hive. I'm, a, I'm a Hive Maxi. But <laughs> yeah, Hive Bitcoin, you're a Hive Maxi. <laughs> it's pretty much the I'm only not one a Maxi. I do. I'm a Crypto Maxi. I don't, I don't really favor any one particular I think any kind of innovation is good and and I'm sold on crypto yeah. um, I, I think it's great um, all the different use cases that we have all the different types of cryptocurrencies that we have no, you know, there's a lot of a lot of scams and things like that in this space but I think eventually they'll get washed out most of them yeah. uh, and we'll you know we'll have um, I think Real meaningful legislation. Is, I think the technology is astounding. It is. It is. The, what, what you can do with it is literally just blows your mind. Yeah, and I think we're just uh, at the tip of the iceberg. I mean, we're just getting started. So it's going to be amazing to see where this goes in the next 30, 40 years. Absolutely. 
So hopefully I'll live long enough to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Y'all go check us out at uh, defluence.online for now. In August, that domain's going to change over to defluence.me. But anyways, that's either neither here nor there. For now, you can email us at podcast at defluence.online. Find us wherever free podcasts are sold. Go check out Alan's paragraph, paragraph.xyz at tailored content, and subscribe to his newsletter. Yeah, and just so you know, tomorrow is going to be the XRP issue. So um, <laughs> I'm doing, I'm curating all the news I can find on this XRP ruling and what people are saying about it. So be sure to tune in. Um, check it out. Yep. This is consider this your preview of, of of the tailored content newsletter tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, and you'll have opportunity to uh, uh, collect it as an NFT too. So uh, I got a really go. uh, cool graphic plan for that. There you go. Well, we'll catch you guys again next time. Be good. Be safe. Never stick your finger where you wouldn't stick your face. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs>